Good evening everyone and welcome to another tournament stream. Today I am streaming Legion vs EG and Legion vs Loka. So those are definitely going to be epic matches. But if you want to see Win vs Souls or Win vs Raid, you have to go to Fujit. For Immor vs Loka and Immor vs Souls, you need to go to Wild Ones. And for EG vs Legion and EG vs Appa, well basically every and I stream the first match uh, both. Uh, you need to go to every bot. He's following EG, I'm following Legion. So let's go to my garage. This is what it looks like. Basically, I have this tank selected because, well, Twister. But also simply the fact that apparently the tanks that we take as spectators influence the spawns. And as it's very unlikely for people to take like seven lights or mediums, uh, it is better for us to take a light to avoid spawning in the wrong place and mess, or well, at least to avoid the team spawning in the wrong place and messing things up for them. So yeah, like I said, Legion vs. EG and Legion vs. Loka here. And I'm excited, it's gonna be epic. These are for me, the all, all three clans that we see tonight here are top four clans in my opinion, so... It's going to be great fun to see what's going to happen and how intense the battles are going to be. Because they can be quite intense. And there we go. There's a room invite. And... EG already mostly there. Haven't seen EG all that much, but that's mainly because um, every has been hogging them this season. But I've been streaming the Legion Boys pretty much since the beginning. So that's perfectly fine with me as well. So, four and a half minutes left to go before we go into the match. We are starting it off on my favorite map of the whole game, which is, of course, Faust. Faust looks like this. You have four bases, base C and D close to their respective spawns, B in the middle and A, basically the map base. What we generally see is C and D being capped, potentially a cheeky cap on B and then... Uh, at least one mat on either side just overlooking base A, but generally not capping it. So we'll have to see what's going to happen now, because of course the gameplay that we've seen up to this season hasn't been all that serious, and that's going to be different now, of course. So, like I said, we're going to have fun with it. I'm pretty sure we're going to have epic matches, especially with these two titans. So I'm looking forward to seeing all of that just taking the map away and making sure that it's not blocking anything on your screen anymore and now we just have to wait three and a half minutes left to go before we go into the very first match and this is interesting i was wondering this we see that winch is taking the kranwagen and the reason i find that interesting and i was wondering if we would see that years ago wargaming introduced new tier 10 mid-season and it caused a lot of uproar and they basically promised never to introduce a tier 10 during a big tournament season again that was until this year of course because they decided to do it anyhow um wargaming is unfortunately not known for no for keeping its promises all that long but this is basically why i'm very much against uh new tier 10s being released mid-season because well in this case, both Legion and EG are tester clans. That means that they will have experience with the uh, with the tank that has just come into the game, even though it will have been changed between actually testing and now, probably. Don't know the exact numbers, but yeah, I think it has been changed a little bit. But that's the thing, though. There's also pro clans in the top 8 that are not testers, and that gives an unfair advantage, in my opinion. Not necessarily in this case, because like I said, both these clans are test clans. But still, all in all, tier 10s should not be released in the middle of a tournament season. And especially not in the middle of a tournament week. Like, if the update had come next week, it would have already been a different pro uh, different uh, scenario. Because then people would have about a month's time before uh, they actually have to play it in the final stages. And it would not actually disrupt the round robins. But when you get it like this, no, not in favor of that at all. In the meantime, one minute and 35 seconds left to go now before we go into the match. And we see Legion readying up with two 205Bs, two 140s, a Kranwagen and two E5s. Versus three E5s, a T22 medium, two IS4s. Oh, sorry, three E5s, a T22 medium, two IS4s and another Kranwagen. 
It's, yeah. I think that's a bad call for board game. I am glad they postponed the update at least with one day to avoid any issues being there um, mid tournament game, so to speak, because the quick tournament yesterday for Asia had to be cancelled because the update wasn't out on Android yet. So that's, yeah, there's always issues with updates. But yeah, hopefully Wargaming will promise this again and then maybe we'll have another year or two where they don't release tanks mid tournament season. And yes, with uh, the fact that we get more seasons means that we get more um, time when tanks couldn't be released then. But the summer season was tier 8, so it doesn't it doesn't matter nearly as much as when you have a season like this. <sighs> I'm disappointed in Wargaming days, not in these two. I understand them taking it and... I don't judge teams for taking the tanks that are available to them. Even if it means they have to, like, um, free XP, the whole line and everything. I'm pretty much doing the same thing, so I can't really judge them for that. But here we go, into the first match of this best of seven between these two titans. I kind of wonder if they've basically either been training with it since yesterday or if they've already devised tactics beforehand while they were testing. Like, not in training rooms, because test tanks aren't allowed to go in training rooms, but I mean, like, in general, knowing where the tank can go, what the tank can do, and all of that. So, let's see. Up, up, and away. Apparently the quick switch between tanks is not working. I've understood it didn't work in Asia server in any case. So we'll have to see how effective we can stream here. We have the Ice Force and the Kranwagen heading towards the middle. General and NG both overlooking base A. D and C being capped. Jerry losing a little bit of HP there. Kranwagen being quite a tall tank. And Legion has a tiny uh, disadvantage in points. But Legion seems to be pushing straight away. And that's an interesting move. I wonder how that's going to work out for them. Base B in the meantime has been capped by EG. And Legion is content to hold here. The Ice Fools are coming back. A little bit of damage done being done to Nico and to Zerd here. General losing HP. We have NG losing HP. General losing some more HP. But now the IS fools are arriving and that's going to be tricky. Jerry is probably going to need help here. But we have General now already gone. Eggy and NG phasing off against the Kranwagen. And that's going to probably hurt and Eggy. Jerry losing quite some HP here. And Winch is waiting until he can clip Eggy. Who is not getting away here. Both teams have lost a the gun. There goes the Radicals. And there goes Nicolade as well with a flying turret. Jerry. Uh, and oh sorry, Winch is now gone. Ice Cream Dessert is gone. It's pretty going up pretty evenly, HP wise as well. There's not that much of a difference. And my camera is derping here. Ice Cream Chilling missing that shot by a Mal. That's probably a misclick or a lag point. Jerry has been taken out. Angie not looking. Oh, what the hell is happening to my camera? NG is still alive, if barely, but he doesn't survive that. I love Polek. I have no idea what my camera is doing. I'm not doing the whole, the height thing. It's two versus one. Object three is the only one left versus Carolade. And although he can potentially do it, it's not going to be easy. Especially not with Cacophonus also arriving. And that shot not penning. 
which is going to make all the difference and the first match will be for EG. It was a bit of a messy game though. Also messy camera work on my end. But that's more because of the game not cooperating with me than anything else. So that is the first game out of the way. EG taking that in just over three minutes. Damage wise, Legion even did more damage, but AG had more HP. One and a half minute left to go before we go into the second match of this best of seven. There's no real pressure yet. Like I said, it's a best of seven. That means that the first team to reach four victories is the one that gets the point. So let's see what's going to happen. One minute and 15 seconds left to go. EG has completely read up with four E5s, a T22, two of them even, and the Kranwagen. They've dropped the Ice Force. And on Legion's side, we see that things are still changing a little bit. And let's see. There's two AMX 50Bs, three E5s, a 215B, and potentially one 140. Let's see if he actually readies up with that as well. There you go. That can be tricky with those T22s. But in about half a minute we will see what they're doing with this. Clippers of course can work wonders but can also be a little bit of a disadvantage. Because once they've clipped they basically are useless for about 20 seconds to 30 uh, seconds thereabouts. And whoops, changed from a 140 to an E5. And she potentially changing the other way, but no, they're sticking with the E5. So that's a lot of E5s. But mainly the E5 is the Clan Wars tank of this season. It is used a lot, and there's a good reason for that. It has relative mobility, it's a bit of an all rounder. And with those fantasy consumables, it can work wonders. So let's see what's going to happen here. To be fair, this does look fancy. Look at that camo. That does look legit fantastic. For some reason, the legendary camos aren't visible in the game yet. I mean, they've been announced, but they're not there. So we have General and Ian Carolade heading towards base A. Base C is being ignored. We have the E5s going towards the middle. And I wonder if this going in for a straight on push. They have been spotted. A whoopsie now changing direction to follow. And the E5s are heading after the T22s. On the other side, there's a bit of a rush going on as well, but most of Legion is on this side. Shooting the people here as they come. The radicals getting tracked. Carolade is almost gone. My camera is still being wonky and won't listen, but Carolade is gone. Alaf Polak losing more HP. Jerry and Object 3 arriving, but Object 3 is still reloading his clip. But Alaf Polak is the preferred target here. Legion having quite some low HP targets. NG being set on fire. Definitely not helping. And then he's taken out. But there goes Alaf Polak. Nicolate not looking too healthy either. And Object 3 is retreating. Cacophonus is being murdered. So is Zerd. Ice Cream Chilling is gone. General is attempting to run off. But losing quite a bit of HP as he does so. But he does take out Object 3 and Legion is responding. Whoopsie driving into the map there. But with a fully loaded clip. Juicy. Radicals actually shoots General from behind. So they focus on Nicolade instead. And there we go with three shots in one go. And now there's just one tank left, which is of course the Kranwagen. And that was Camera Derp again. 
and that again as well this is like lovely this is not really working as intended I think wargaming broke things and now winch is set on fire and juicy waits for the HP to go down so he can kill him in one shot and the second game is for legion <coughs> sorry way to choke on your own breath <laughs> Um, that was a very quick game, just two and a half minutes long. Big difference in damage. I think the fact that Legion went to isolate their mediums cost them too much HP too quickly. And that is what cost EG the game. Nice move by Legion here. One and a half minute to go before we go into the next map. Because we are switching maps and we are going to win to Malinovka. That looks like this. You have three bases, two up top, one down below. Generally what we see is a spotter near base A on both sides that generally don't even spot each other but they just want to see where everyone is and then most of the action will take place around base B and C. So that is where we will be going next. Just making sure seriously the game is not working with me. Um, EG is taking 4E5s, 2IS4s four and let's see what ice cream chilling is going to take. We don't know yet, but neither does he, seems like. And on Legion's side, we see a 215B, 2140s, two Kran Wagons, one E5, and one IS4. So that is a very interesting line. But the thing is, the Kran Wagons can function as um, autoloaders as well as just a whole um, general reloading thing. The DPM, I believe, is quite low, but it does pack a wallop. 20 seconds left to go before we go into the match and see what's going to happen. The score is 1-1. Anything can happen. Like I said, it's a best of seven. The team that reaches four victories first is the one that gets the point. Countdown clock has begun. We are ready to go into the game. And here we go. Oh, he does have the uh, the legendary camo there, juicy. I wonder how he got that. I haven't even free XP my crown bugging yet, but that's mainly because I need the credits to buy it. So I figured I wouldn't spend my free XP. I might as well grind the Emil too a little bit before I actually get it. The thing is, the Nord actually really looks like the uh, Swedish post office. That camo. Let's see if the switch works. No, it really does not work. Basically, Wargaming broke the free cram this uh, this update then. Always a good thing. What? So we have Legion focusing on the B and C area. And EG being a bit more split up heading towards the lower area. Blind shot by Whoopsie there. But there's no one there. The Grand Wagons are going towards the middle. And there's the post office tank. With the three crowns. I actually want the monster camera because it looks so funny. Jerry has been spotted. Oh, ice cream chilling, taking quite an ass whooping there. Radicus capping base uh, base C now, and ice cream chilling is almost gone. Nicolade losing HP as he crosses over. Zerd capping base B now as well. Whoopsie in trouble, losing a lot of HP there. A little bit too over eager and Zerd is abandoning base B to go after Winch who is isolated and that's always a dangerous thing. Radicals losing a little bit of HP. Now Zerd being isolated and tracked so he has to be careful not to lose too much HP there. With the Kranva, the, the Eve Radicals and Juicy have flanked a little bit going after Winch there. Radicals not looking too healthy. They are helping Whoopsie. But Nicolade, basically, both teams are spread out. Both teams losing quite a bit of HP. Whoopsie is not looking healthy here. And they will have to be careful not to lose a tank too early. Ice Cream Chilling is still alive. Even if barely. Big hit into General there. There goes Winch. He survived a lot longer than I thought. General taking a shot there. Juicy is gone. Ice Cream Chilling finally died, but don't ask how. He survived way too long. Nicolade. Also gone. Jerry. 
using the corpse to hide behind. And there goes General. It is six versus three. We have Radicals and Caroline on the show there. Radicals has been taken out. Bakakovnus is now basically being set upon by three tanks. Olaf Polak has been taken out. And now the rest of Legion is arriving. There goes Kakovinus and only Caroline is left. This is definitely Legion's game. Can't really go anywhere else now. Except for my camera who is trying to fly itself. And there we go. The Crown Vag is definitely giving their money's worth in this battle. But I think that the main issue here was Legion all staying up except for Whoops and most of Ichi going down, which isolated some of the tanks. Which is how Legion got the upper hand quite quickly. And that's not necessarily a mistake. It's just quite aggressive play from Legion. A little less than three minutes for this battle. And now we see Legion getting ready with a 215B, two IS-4s, two Granwagens, an E5 and a 140, versus four E5s, a T-22, an E-100 and an IS-4. So in 1 minute and 11 seconds we are going to go into the 4th match of this matchup. Anything can still happen. Hello everyone that's watching by the way and a special hello to Andrew because I haven't seen you in ages and I hope all is well with you. But as he said he's alive so I do expect that things are well with you. <laughs> 47 seconds left to go. And then we go into the battle. Basically there's no real pressure just yet. And anything can happen with these two. So I'm not making uh, any predictions as to what's going to happen. Who's going to win and all of that. Because that would be pointless. But it's actually, like I said, I'm very much against wargaming or releasing new tier 10 tanks uh, straight away into a tournament season because this is not okay and exactly here you can see why because if these tanks ha if these clans hadn't been testing them they wouldn't be using them right now and that's saying something because that gives them an advantage over the clans that aren't touched at testing now to be fair most clans in the top uh, eight are testers E.G. is, Raid is, Loka is, Legion is, Raid is, and Imo is, so it's basically just Souls and Appa. Oh, this looks fantastic as well. Is that the radioactive camo? Actually, no idea what camo that is, but it looks awesome. In the meantime, we have Legion heading towards the BC area, and E.G. now doing the same thing. Caroline now also coming, not actually, and no one going towards base A. We have Whoopsie overlooking the Kranwagas being quite forwards again. No one is spotted just yet. Jerry is now. Radicals losing a little bit of HP there. And now Legion has to be a, bi a bit careful not to lose the upper hand here with the positions because EG is quite well positioned. Whoopsie arriving but holding there, not wanting to get unspotted I no doubt. Radicals losing HP as he crosses over. Whoopsie joining him. The Kranwagens. Basically Legion all going into the corner there. Juicy bouncing. Legion is losing quite a bit of HP here. Angie losing a lot of HP as well. Base B is being contested. Big hits there. Le uh, Legion is basically bleeding HP here. Angie not looking too healthy, but neither is... Well, basically all of Legion. Both teams have lost quite a bit of HP, but... EG has a near 3k advantage here. Object 3, an NG. Low on HP, very low on HP. 
Are they even going to make it? Object 3 is the first one gone. Angie is the second one gone. Winch being set upon. But we have a big brawl on the other side. Radicals is gone. Winch is gone, but it's taking them a lot of tanks. Jerry losing HP very fast here. Not going to be able to reload again. And now it's 6 versus 3. Juicy is set on fire, which is not helping him either. Danny bounces and pretty much explodes. There goes Nicolade. Whoopsie is still alive, if barely. Ice cream chilling. It's actually Alef Palak that takes him out. And we only have a Zert left. And he's not going to win this. They're basically capping base C for the memes here because they've generally have it. And it is now 2-2. As strong as the Grand Magas were the first match, they did not deliver this one. So let's see, we are moving on to a new map. We are going to go to Hellas. Hellas looks like this. You have three bases, base C, map base, base A and B basically facing off against each other. Positioning around base C is much better, but if you want to dominate the bases, you have to stay on the other side. Basically, that is the map in short. I'm not going to bother you with too many details. Just making sure that there is no map on the screen for you guys. And it would help if my game actually loaded. There we go. 1 minute 11 seconds left before we go into the game. With 2-2 anything can happen. But after this match, one of the teams will uh, be able to get a match point match after that. So then things are going to become interesting because it will put pressure on the other team. Legion ready with 3 E5s, a Kranwagen, 2 Ice Force and a 140 versus 5 E5s, oh sorry, yeah 5 E5s and 2 T22s. Oof, that looks like a rushing lineup to be honest. But then we saw something similar happen with Raid and they were not pushing at all with it so anything can happen. 30 seconds left to go before we go into this game. And then we'll see what happens. We always have to be a little bit patient at this point, and it's always the boring part because everyone is ready except for the game itself. But the countdown clock has begun. And here we go into the fifth game of this best of seven. Dun, 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 dun. So many E5s. Oof. Especially also with the sandbags and the true armor. I mean, the angle of the E5, it, it doesn't look that armored, but it kind of is because you can wiggle and your armor profile at your lower plate will change. And that can make it very hard for people to actually shoot you. So let's see. Legion heading towards the middle. E.g. A little bit split up, but going a bit towards both sides here. Juicy has been spotted. So is Object 3. And it's, oh, it's not Juicy, sorry, it was Zerd. Base B is being capped. Legion playing it quite aggressively here. The Ice Force pushing. Object 3 losing HP. But is this going to work? Angie losing some HP here. The Ice Force being set upon by both sides now. Alef Polak has been tracked. Cacophonous. Basically, both sides are bleeding HP here. I'm not sure this is going to be a very effective push. Whoopsie arriving. On the other side, we have basically. Oof, there goes Alf Palak. Object 3, not looking too healthy. Going to be gone at the next reload. There he goes. And there goes NG as well. This looks a bit like too hasty a game from Legion. Expecting EG to not be careful. So they've lost two guns already now. Whoopsie. Taking another hit there. Cacophonous, not looking too healthy either, but 
Whoopsie dealing with the T22 and that making it dangerous. Caco uh, radicals sh getting shot from both sides. Juicy has been taken out. Carolate now getting uh, giving the attention to Whoopsie that he wanted, but it's going to be very costly for Whoopsie because it is a T22 after all. Cacophona still alive, doing HE damage in the tracks, not doing enough to actually kill him off. And so he dies himself. Whoopsie is still alive, if barely, but this is definitely EG's game, you can already see that. Kranwagen still reloading, Zerd. There goes Whoopsie, Zerd not going to be long for this world either. And basically, this was too hasty a game by Legion. EG having plenty of time to respond and get things ready and there goes Jerry and he's the last one gone. And now it is 3-2 for EG that means that they have a potential next match point next game. If they win the next game they get the point. And that is going to be pressure on Legion because right now it's about winning every game. Because stand standing wise it's not all that clear for the top four yet. But yeah, too hasty by Legion. And the Kranwagen in this case not carrying either. One and a half minute left to go before we go into the sixth match of this best of seven. As streamer, I'm always a fan of getting more games. So I don't mind that at all. But we see EG getting ready with 5 E5 T22 medium and a Vickers versus potentially 4 E5s and 140 and 2 ice 4s. Kind of depends on whether they're ready up. No, there's another. Okay, we have a 2 1 5 B, 4 E5s and 140 and whatever is juicy is deciding to take. But he still has about 45 seconds to actually ready up, so that's plenty of time. Let's see. Juicy actually being moved out here. Eggy being moved in. And let's see what he's going to stick with the 140. So, 45s to 215B and 2140s versus 5v5s, a T22 and a Vickers. It's going to be interesting to see what they do here because, like I said, the pressure is on Legion now. They have to win the next match if they still want to get a point let's see it would help there we go I was gonna say it would help if we actually load it into the game definitely need to address the broken camera with wargaming though after the stream not going to bother with that now because there's little point they won't fix it before tonight anyhow. We have EG focusing on the base C side and the middle all going together. Legion doing similar thing. The 140 is heading to one side, the rest of the team heading towards the other. Let's see what they're going to do. Speed boost has not been activated, I believe. Or maybe it's already gone. Base C is being kept, but that's basically a trap. The E5s are there, but all of EG is on the other side. And that's going to be highly interesting. A little bit of a hit in general there. And that means that Legion will have an advantage here when it comes to the points. Zerd being quite forwards there. Jerry holding a bit more at the back. Legion content with one base. But now Whoopsie is making a move. He has to be careful though. Because they don't know exactly where the rest of EG is. And going to cap the base might be very dangerous here. Especially with the Vickers arriving. No damage being done to either side though. Oof. Radicals losing a little bit of HP on the other side. Whoopsie defending base B. But let's watch this send off on this side. 
Lines of fire happening. Jerry having taken a little bit of HP, HE damage there. And he is holding carefully. Legion having a knee 100 point point advantage. That means that at least two tanks have to be taken off. Uh, have to be killed in order for EG to get the advantage. Or of course they have to cap base B. And that's going to be interesting because now Aleph Palak is moving to do exactly that. He does get spotted, but he's now in safety. And Legion cannot decap him without taking a risk themselves. He does take a little bit of damage though. Cheeky shot by Eggy there. But they will still manage to get the base here. No doubt about that. Especially when that shot doesn't pen. And that means that EG is quick to get that advantage back. Jerry crossing over. We have an E5 standoff on one side. And base B is basically abandoned. And I wonder if they're going to take advantage of that. Alaf Polak going to overlook base B. But we have Whoopsie moving in. Cheekily starting to cap base B. Because it's not so much. He gets spotted. He might. No, he's not going to get it. But. Oh, he does get it! Legion! Very cheeky move. The E5s are pulling back. E EG is making a push. But that base cap by Legion is very, very naughty. Radicals now in trouble. Object 3 in trouble as well. Basically, they're in a horrible position there. Caught in the middle. But Legion having a good advantage here. As long as they stay alive. And that's going to be the tricky part. Winch not looking too healthy here. He is the preferred target. Nicolade also taking some shots. Winch almost gone. And then Obupsi actually misses. There goes Winch. 940 points. Base B has been stolen. My camera is flying itself. I have no idea what's happening. Kakofnos. Ooh, base A now also being kept. We are at 9... Uh, basically, one tank has to die. And then... Oof, object 3 died. Kakofnos. Almost gone. If Legion survives, if Kakotovanus dies, it's, oh, there we go. With Nikolay and Kakotovanus dying, Legion has to match and we go for a tiebreak. What a game this was! This was intense! I honestly did not expect it to go like this because it was so close in the end. EG making excellent moves by capping those bases back and then just standing. In the base to avoid Legion getting any points from anywhere. It was so close. But of course if you have to stand in the base. You do make yourself a bit of a target. And that's what won Legion the game here. Taking those kills. Now we're moving maps. We're going to go here. You have Alpenstadt. C the heavy base. B the middle base. I don't know what else to call it. And A the mat base. Basically we see a lot of B C action here. We're potentially fast tank to run around. And like I said, it's a tiebreaker. So after this this game, we know who gets the point for this matchup. Oof, exciting. Let's see. 50 seconds left to go before we go into the actual match. Both teams still deciding on a definite lineup. But we see now Legion readied up with an AMX 50B, two 140s, three E5s and a VK90, which actually hit the store today. I actually bought it mainly because it's one of the two tier 10 tanks that's not grindable that I was missing in my garage. But yeah. And EG going with their five E5s and two T22s tactic, depending on maybe some, uh, some things are being switched around. It's one IS-4 instead of an E5 there. 
and we see Legion switching around as well with now two E5s, two 140s, two Kranwagens and a VG. That is going to be a tricky, tricky decision there and it could pay off, it's a gamble, but it can also work against them. Let's see. Dun 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 dun. Ooh, and then she has the other, the Need Hog, which is actually a oh god, I, it's a part of the 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 Etna, the the Edda, sorry, uh, which is Norwegian mythology, which is pretty cool. So let's see what's going to happen in this all-important match. With the T22s heading towards base A, Legion going towards the middle with Eggy to spot. I mainly want to fly over here because I want to see the little monster. Well, not so little monster, but just look at that. <laughs> it does look really weird, but it looks fantastic and I want it. E5s have been spotted. Blind shots happening near where Eggy is and he wisely pulls back a little bit. E5s have not been spotted there. Nicolade is all alone and that could be very dangerous. Legion going straight on in. The Kranwagen's there. The E5s arriving. Nicolade losing a lot of HP very, very quickly, but so does Zurt there. Losing quite a lot of HP. The E5s are holding. But they're in a precarious position there. Nicolade has been taken out. Base B not necessarily being kept, but we have Jerry there to launch her to launch a shot. We have the 140s potentially going after General there. Taking a shot taking some big shots there though. And we have EG responding. Ice cream chilling, losing a lot of HP. He is the preferred target. Eggy has to get out of there along with whoops. They have to be careful. It is a big giant cluster F. But Legion has a gun advantage. Whoopsie isn't being careful. General has been taken out. Ice cream chilling. Not looking to ha Oof, there goes Whoopsie, but there goes ice cream chilling as well. Legion having a distinct gun advantage here. Eggy. Still alive, if barely. And with two versus six, we see Winch already saying a GG. Because this is Legion's game. Very aggressive uh, gameplay by Legion. But it worked out. Alaf Polak not looking too healthy. We have Eggy in that beautiful, beautiful monster of a tank. Literal monster of a tank. And there we go. Carolate is gone. And we finish with this. Because <laughs> it does look... It looks insane. It really does. But Nicolade being on his own is what cost EG the game here. Again, not saying that that is a bad move because it's a, it's a logical starter position. But Legion just honed in on that. The E5s capped EG from pushing in altogether to help Nicolade. It was... I think it was a fantastic game. It was great to see a push like that. I love when a push basically works and when it just works out. Especially with the E5s, um, that was Radicals and Object 3, I believe. That was just holding those ridges and just keeping EG from pushing all together. And basically, Legion taking a big gamble here. But like I said, it paid off. And like I said, I do love tiebreakers. This was a close, close call. Let's see, Loka having won all five games so far, Legion now having four points. Um, let's see, I always, I need to count because this is always something that I do in. But basically we need to get to 16 points, so we have 8, 10, 14, 15, 6, oh sorry, no, I'm, I, I'm not 16 points. Uh, and more than that, I can't even brain. Basically, every team has played five games. So, Legion lost one, so they have four points. Let's see what happened with Imor. They lost to Loka. 
so let's see they have a final score of two so far they're up against souls next but yeah they have a final score of two so that is right eg staying as is as well raid what's happened with raid dun 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 They won from Appa, so they're up against. They're up at three now. Um, and win. What happened with win? They're still going at it. Looks like they're up against Souls. So that's the score we don't know yet, but the rest is final. So Souls and win are still going at it. But the only one that is effectively safe by the looks of it, is Loka. But as it is, top 4 right now is Loka, Legion, Immor and Raid. So that means that EG has a tough job. They have to win the next two matches in order to have a chance. So that's going to be interesting. Actually, just having a quick look at Legion because we want to see what we are up against Loka next. I knew that, but more like 8 or 4, which means I have 24 minutes, which means that I can show you a bunch of replays. And I've got some really cool games today. Not necessarily all tier 10. But there was one in particular that I'm uh, quite interested in. Actually two in particular. So I'm going to be showing you those. That is of course if my laptop works with me and what lets me open a replay. But it's uh, always having some issues when I'm streaming uh, with... You just need to be patient when you open things on my laptop. So let's see... Here we go. Tiger 2 game. And it was mostly the mixture of medals that had me like, okay, I need to see this. Alongside damage, of course. And then, of course, I have another one that just looks really cool. So I'm just like, I got some cool replays today. I actually wanted to show you like the new tanks and all. Because I got replays from those as well. But going by epicness, I need to show you some other games. So let's see. This this, this camo it does look great. There are so many pretty camos these days. <laughs> I free speed the thing on the first day. I basically did the doubles and then just free speed the next tank. So let's see. But if you like, I would not. I don't like using uh, certificates uh, on tanks mainly because I just want them all to just be having that pretty camo. And I'm afraid that if I use a certificate, then I lose out on being able to use it on another tank. I'm greedy that way and a bit of a hoarder. Or tiger be very aggressive here. There's one. And he gets spotted. How does he know though? He's not a tester, I believe. And there we go. Nice little bounce. But the tiger too on the other side did not bounce. Shot in the face. That's the downside of it. Most Capriolos work for me very well, but the one of the KV4, not so much. I never understand this. I believe maybe. Oh no, he's NA. That's the thing. Thing is that NA is such a chatty server. Like, people are like constantly talking the whole battle. And I don't get it. Focus on the battle. But yeah, this is just something that I've noticed over time and play when I'm playing on an A. Everyone just keeps on talking. It's weird. Tiger 2 now arriving potentially. Now he's facing off against the Emule. But there's another tank there as well. The Sue, they have to be careful for that. 
Let's see. There you go, tiger. Basically, it's not like a Mexican stand-up and anything, but not all that much is happening. There's, there's shots being fired and all. That Sue is going to die so hard here. Cheeky shot there, I like it. How is that Sue still alive though? I have to say that that is quite special. And not in a positive way for the enemy team. Too cheeky shot there. He is going to die very diff uh, very hard as well. Nice little bounces. They can't exactly help you. They're nowhere near you. It's not their fault you run into a city on your own. Shooting the building. And there goes the E3. Low HAP. There you go. APCR, I was going to say. So now it's 2 versus 4. No idea how that panned. Sense. Stock. Grave digger. Basically, he's being a bit forwards here. He needs to be a bit more careful. His body is almost gone. His body is definitely gone. Nobody had that pen that was barely aimed. Gravedigger having loads of trouble trying to pen him. I don't think the send count is on that. He probably thought he would pull back more. There you go. 4k damage into it. He has to. Oh, I was gonna say he has to be careful of the grave digger, but he's actually behind. Uh, just they're all pushing his front. His front. That is um, special. Because why on earth would you get behind the tank that you can't pen on your front? None of them are making a move. I think the Gravedigger is now going to come up behind. Because that would make sense. Now he's losing a lot of HP. But there you go. Buildings to the rescue. Giving him time to turn around. Nearly gone. Not wiggling enough here. There we go. Much bigger of a threat. Let's see if he's going to be able to pull this off. And he does. One more, which is the sock sense. Let's see. Sun seems to have gone AFK. In this case, he's not even careful. 70 seconds left to go on the clock here. But he gets it. 5.6k damage in a tier 8. 5 kills. That is insane. Steel Wall, Kolobanov. I think the Scout? Yeah, Scout Metal. Ratley, high caliber of course, top gun and a nice ace with 1500 and uh, basic speed exactly. Insane game. Like I said, some games just deserve showing off. Um, Let's see, I have time for one more. And just going to make sure that I am picking the right one because this is also one of those games 
I saw. Um, yeah, this is it. This should be it. You just have to be patient with my laptop again. Come on. There you go. I saw the results of this and I'm like, what the hell? So I want to see what happens in this game. It's tier 7 tank. Keep that in mind when you see what's happening. I do absolutely love this tank. So let's see. After this, we probably should get ready for the next match. But I do think that we will be able to watch this at least. He is top tier. Let's see what's he going to do. Dun, 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 dun. Not supremacy. I generally like supremacy more, but that's more because you can manipulate the battle, uh, the battle better, in my opinion. I'm going to the waterfalls. I both like and hate the waterfalls, and that has everything and everything to do with the. You basically get yourself stuck in a corner. It's a good position to be in, but you can't get out of it. Not really aimed there. Lots of street wagons here. This guy, nobody what he's doing, but I think he doesn't know either. That is basically free damage. Let's see. Now he's crossing back over, which I think is a good call to avoid getting shot. But you can still stay in a similar position. Because that all seems to be like pushing. I shoot in the ground, which is always helpful. And there we go. Crossing over. I'm going places. Let's see. IS has been spotted. Base is being kept though, which is a bit of an issue. Especially since the Tiger 1 seems to be having trouble. Oop, there's another 43 here. Who is not focusing on our 43 year at all? These are always like the games I like the most when you're like, the enemy is not really paying attention to you. There we go. Tiger 1 has actually been taken out. And now they're capping the base again. Let's see where he's going. Yeah, we know he has to be somewhere. There you go. Always nice to arrive behind a TD. Because then you can circle them. And stay behind them and be careful of the IS. Because the IS does pack a wallop. I mean, that is going to hurt, but it's more important to get that ace out of the, the suit out of the way straight away. And then you can circle the other one. Ooh, fire. That's not a good thing. He's basically a one-shot now. There you go, and now it's just a VK. Run, he says. Let's see, we are at 4.6k. I want to remind you again that this is a tier 7 game. Enemy 
cheeky shot, but it works. There you go, Street Wagon causing a nice destruction here. <gasps> that bounced though. That's ooh, he does not get the kill because why on earth would you give your friend the kill? But still, 5k damage in T7 is insane numbers in my opinion. Fantastic game, nearly 50, well, 1451 base XP in T7. Ridiculously good. I do love it when you get one of those games where the enemy is just ignoring you and you can just get all the damage in. It's fantastic, I love it. So let's see, do we have a final score yet? Win! Come on, load for me. Win Rom from Souls. 4-3, so that was a close score as well. So this is the leaderboard as we have it. EG lacking behind, but they still have some matches to go. Souls and Appa of course here due to the seeding abuse, so this kind of shows what that means. And we have Legion and Loka and Raid in the top three. But now our next match is Legion versus Loka, so that's going to be very tough. Raid is up against, let's see, up against the Win next, so that's going to be a tough cookie as well. Win basically can do very weird things, and that's absolutely lovely, but that does make for. Uh, Unexpected games, really. Uh, in four minutes, the room will be up. I'm not going to be showing you another replay because of that, because there's just not enough time, and I don't want to risk missing the room. But like I said, Legion versus Loka next on here. Fujit and Rip are both streaming uh, Win versus Raid, and Imo versus Souls and Wild Ones, and Eiji versus Appa. And after that, we only have one match left per team. And that basically means that Loka is safe. They're, they're through to the top four regardless. So there's no real pressure for them anymore. That's got to be a relaxing feeling. So we're just going to have to wait and see what they do. Because the thing is, if you can relax, sometimes you relax a bit too much. At the same time, not having that pressure can make you perform better because you don't have that pressure basically on you. So anything can happen there. In the meantime, let's just have a look. I actually have way more fantastic games to show, but yeah. Um, let's actually focus here. You have lots of crates. This crate selection is actually really good fun. Um, but it's not worth the price. If you have to I've so far I've managed to do it once with the 10k uh, the bundle for 10k gold uh, let's see if it shows this no not that one the one for 10k that was basically on sale this one sorry and i got my money's worth for it mainly because i ended up with more gold than i had before a lot bunch of boosters and stuff like that free xp uh certificates so that was kind of funny but gambling is still a big no and it's not a good thing I'm kind of curious about the animated camo. I haven't actually seen it being animated anywhere. But there's some good camos in here. And I kind of want more of them. The only uh, problem is that I'm currently out of gold. This is not my account. This is my press account. But on my main account, I'm out of gold. <laughs> so I can't really buy anything right now. But that is mainly because I bought the VK. So it's probably my own fault. But like I said, the VK was the only tank... Uh, well, one of two tanks that was missing in tier 10 that can't be grinded. The other one that I'm still missing is a Super Conqueror. So, I hope that that will come around when I've saved enough gold for it again. Uh, but we'll have to see. I do like the Bulldog thing here. I like this camo. It is a fantastic tank. It prints credit like no tomorrow. I quite like it. At the moment, I'm basically just filling the space with empty chatter because there's not really much to talk about right now. 
as we already know the scores and after this game we might be able to give a definite uh, top but yeah Appa and Souls definitely not making the top four surprise unless really weird things happen but I don't think they will and that's what you get for abusing the ceiling system and there we go there's a room for one of the epic matches here Legion versus Loka and we're starting off on my least favorite map of the whole game <laughs> Loka of course always going a bit um, sucking at my heartstrings because it is still my baby even though I haven't been in the clan in a very long time, I'm still the one that made it. I'm still the one that decided what it stands for. And that stuff still comes back. Because, I mean, Animal Planet comes from the fact that Loka stands for lots of cute animals. And, of course, it's also a, a, a way of pointing out that we're all a little crazy and all of that. So, yeah. I like that that is still a bit of a thing in Loka. And that they've kept that. So let's see, all of Loka is there. Legion not quite completely yet. But they're still just under four minutes to actually get here. So that's plenty of time. In the meantime, I have a feeling that my YouTube chat has stopped working. So if I'm not responding, it's not because I don't like you. It's more because I don't see it. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, definitely missing all the chat. I thought it was like all quiet, but actually people are like talking and everything. Um, let's see. Right now I'm just catching up on all the chat. Someone talking about uh, basically my not having to do allow not speaking shit about the NA server. I'm not talking shit about the NA server. I just find it weird that people generally spend more time talking than actually fighting. Thank you, Pantoof. Not sure if you're still here, but <laughs> thank you, Pantoof. Oh my god. Chat is basically um, stuck on the message ages ago. On my YouTube uh, whatchamacallit screen. There you go. Oh god, and <laughs> when I struggle with the numbers, and he made a comment about that. I don't think Brian will ever be returning to Blitz, mainly because of how everything went and all the drama after that. I don't think he'll do that. Let's see, there we go. All called up. Two minutes left to go before we go into the match. I do have the YouTube chat on my phone now so I can keep a little bit track of what's being said. Even if my YouTube itself is not working along with me. One minute, 45 seconds left to go. Like I said, we are starting it off on my least favorite map, which is of course Castilla. Castilla has three bases, base A, the map base, base C, the heavy base, base B in the middle. Generally, we see actions around the Citadel and around base B. Sometimes a little bit of holding around base C, but generally no caps. Because there's so many camper lines on both sides and lines of fire that people will generally don't bother. Uh, that is also why I find this the most tedious map to have in tournaments. And that's mostly because of all those campering spots. And the fact that that means that a lot of people basically play carefully and then you get still make gaming. And that's just very boring to watch. One minute, three seconds left to go. And we have Legion ready with a Leo, three E5s, two AMX 50Bs and a VK. Versus a Vickers, two E5s, two 268s, a Sheridan IS4. Especially interesting to see how those 268s will perform. Because taking one, we often see on this map. But taking two can be very tricky. It can also work wonders. Because it is a very... Cheeky in mobile tank. You can go anywhere. So, let's see. 27 seconds left to go before we go into the match. 
And basically this is a very important one. Because if Legion wins this, they're safe. They're going to definitely going to go through. And Loka is already safe. So like I said, there's no pressure on them. And that is an important thing as well. So let's see. Here we go. Dun 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 dun. Not surprised to see the Sheridan here. It can work very, uh, very well on this map. Mainly because there's so many spots where you can fire missiles from from safety without any risk to yourself. And let's go up, up and away. Legion splitting up, mainly going towards the base A side. The AMXs and the E5s and the VK all heading there. Object 3 in the Leo. Going for a spotty spot. E5s going up the ramp there. But so far unspotted. My camera is doing weird things again. It is definitely broken. Juicy crossing the water. And Legion holding at the back. The F. Not sure where he wants to go. The E5 is going towards the Citadel. They expect people to be there. Even if no one is spotted just yet. No bases are being capped. Some blind shots are being taken. Object 3 relocating. And we have Loka relocating as a whole. Juicy having been spotted. And immediately taking some damage. We have DF going in hot. But not spotting anyone yet. Legion holding patiently. No bases are being kept. The AMXs are rotating back around. Whoopsie, now having been spotted. Blind shot happening, but no damage being done, and now base C is going to be capped. Potentially, yet yeah, there you go. The two E5s work on that. We have NG lining up. The F losing quite a bit of HP. Ooh, Juicy being nearly massacred there. Not looking too healthy, and base C has been capped. NG getting very little damage in. Juicy, of course, now a very big liability. Those 268s already bringing their money's worth. And now relocating. Legion rotating a little bit. But they've nearly lost Juicy. And they're at, at, at a point and base disadvantage here. Legion pushing a little bit. But being careful, the F having been spotted. Oof, big hit into him there. Big hit into object 3 as well. Radicals losing a little bit of HP. Zerd as well as he crosses over. Zerd getting hit badly and being tracked. The F has been deleted though. Legion taking a bit of an aggressive approach here. Zerd not going to be long for this world like this. Juice is still climbing. Eggy on his own in a very terrible position. Juicy one shot. Zerd not looking too healthy either. Ariana Grande arriving. Eggy still alive. RG being absolutely hammered here. There goes Eggy though. Both teams have lost the gun. Zerd not looking too healthy. Juicy not looking too healthy either. Object 3 being basically hammered. Nice shot there. Ariana Grande taking out Juicy. Spitfires. Oof. RG has been taken out. Spitfires being taken out. Object 3 is still alive, but barely. And he's not going to survive this unless Unisex misses, which he doesn't. It is 4 versus 4, but HP-wise, 
basically EG is uh, sorry Loka is looking so much more healthy whoopsie is being taken out unisex is taken out but so is NG radicals the only healthy one left alive is basically facing off against three tanks here and those are very three very healthy tanks he has no chance whatsoever Zert still alive but cannot get the shots in takes a big one there into Ariana Grande but radicals is almost gone they don't have the base they have a very big disadvantage. There goes Zerd. And now it's just the Radicals who is taken out by Edgar. And the first game is for Loka. Juicy getting hit that hard that early in the game. Oof. That is basically what cost them the game here. Not necessarily Juicy because that can happen. The 2 6 8 were just perfectly... Uh, positioned and they got those shots in them relocating made all the difference for Loka here even if they got uh, taken out that basically it turned the battle because it meant that Juicy with his big armor could not be what Legion wanted and needed him to be what he was uh, what his role was One minute, 17 seconds left to go before we go into the second game of this best of seven. No real pressure just yet. Like I said, best of seven, and that just means that the first team to reach four victories is the one that is through to, well, basically that has the point. And we now see that with less than a minute to go for the second game, Loka is getting ready with a 2-1-5-B, three E5s. One two six eight this time, a Kranwagen and a Sheridan. And they're going to go up against a two six eight, potentially two AMX fifty Bs, a VK, two E fives and a T twenty two, depending on if Jerry actually readies up with this. And he does. All the loaders. Always a bit of a risk, but they can work wonders. So let's see, 20 seconds left to go before we go into the match. And Loka definitely the strongest so far on the leaderboard. So that is saying something and they were beautifully lost battle. So if there's anything to go by for the next couple of battles, I'll be a very happy streamer. Let's see. Lots of different avatars as well. <laughs> Look, this is what I mean. There's so many pretty camos in the game right now. I absolutely love it. And let's see. Locusing, Loka focusing on the base A side this time. No party without me going to the front. More to overlook base C than anything else. We have Whoopsie crossing over towards base A, of course. DF is going to arrive there earlier and he has missiles, so that can be tricky here for, for Whoopsie. If he gets spotted early. But so can DF. Juicy has been spotted, missile has been fired, it does pen. Whoopsie has been spotted, but the F manages to stay unspotted. They know exactly who shot that missile, though. Let's see. Radicals all the way at the back. The F still in that spot. No bases are being kept just yet. Juicy being quite aggressive here, though. I wonder if he's going to get away with it. No, he decides not to really do that yet. AMX is ready. Zerk playing quite aggressively. RG taking a little bit of a hit there. But not too dramatic. So does Zerd and so does Whoopsie. So does Zerd again. Legion not really being careful here. Juicy going to cap base B in a very cheeky position here. Unisex. I'm going for another shot potentially. Trying to reverse side scrape. No, he's just not going going for it. RG taking a little bit of damage there again. 
But now Legion has a base advantage. So as long as they hold the rest of the bases, then they should be fine. Unisex taking a bit of a hit there. Oops, he has to be careful though. He's not in the best of positions there and he is of course spotted. But Legion's team has got some quite good positions here. RG pulling back. We see a missile flying but it doesn't pan. RG is ready for uh, for that shot though and he does get it. Whoopsie, having bled quite a bit of HP there. He needs to be careful. Because at some point, most likely, Loka will make a push somewhere. And they will have to be ready for that. Missile flying, not hitting anywhere near. Spitfires moving in. But Loka, uh, sorry, Legion basically has space B and C. Locked down here. But this is basically the kind of stillmate gaming that I was referring to. Juicy has to be careful here though. Because with those E5 being spotted. Yeah, he's immediately repositioned himself. He does take a shot there from Unisex though. But he is a bit in a precarious position right now. Radicals shot into Ariana Grande there. Angie is up top. And now he's reloading his clip altogether, but he does take a hit for it. Angie taking big hits there and getting the blip out of there, which is a good call because this is not the moment to waste HP. Basically, you want to be ready for whatever push they do. Big hit into Edgar. Edgar. Not sure if this is actually meant... Well, it's meant to happen, of course. But I think that Edgar is the sacrificial lamb because this allows Loka to push the other side. Edgar is gone. No party without me now being set upon. My camera is flying itself and that is not really helpful. I would like to get control back. This is basically me, like, what happens when you go into a wall. <sighs> Whoopsie is gone, but so is no party without me. Both teams have lost two guns. My camera... Oh my... Seriously? Are you kidding me? I'm not moving my camera right now. Now it's back. RG in a precarious position. So is Unisex a little bit. Base C has now also been capped. Legion is taking this game. They just need to be a little bit careful here and just survive. Juicy. RG is being taken out. Base B is going to be contested here. Unisex moving in, but we have object 3. I'm kind of afraid to. I'm just going to do it like this because I'm afraid to move my camera and end up flying again. Unisex. Not going to survive the next shot from, our, from object 3. There he goes. 924. Juicy might not survive this, but in this case, he's not the last one left, but Juicy's taken out. Legion has a big gun advantage, though. And now, with only 15 HP left, we have Ariana Grande taking out Radicals, but Legion has a 3 tank advantage and a 2 base advantage. They can just go in, and even if they don't get it, that is fine because Legion wins on points here. Zerd going to take go in for the kill, but he doesn't get it anymore. And Legion has this game. I thought for a moment that Edgar was the decoy here. Because we have seen that in top clans before. That basically one tank is sent to be the sacrificial lamb. But in this case, it didn't work out. One and a half minutes left to go. We are going to go on to the next map, which is Fort Despair. Fort Despair looks like this. You have three bases. Base A out in the open, base B in the middle, and base C the most secluded. Um, this map basically allows for Super Heavies to be used quite effectively. It is relatively small and everything, but Super Heavies are always a bit of a risk as well. 
So basically, that is the map that we are going to go to in just over a minute. In the meantime, my neighbor's dog is alone and that means that he's barking. And we have Legion ready in a 215B, two Kranwagens, a mouse to ice force and an E5 versus one AMX 50B, two 113s, three E5s and a Kranwagen. <laughs> in the meantime, there's uh, some comments on the chat. But again, I can only literally see that. <laughs> Eggie was left alone. They didn't come and help him. But basically, there's a five minute delay on the stream. So like I said, anything that you say or respond to five minutes later. And I have no idea what you're actually responding to because it's five minutes ago. And here we go. Third match of this best of seven. And anything can still happen. There's no pressure just yet. And let's see. Dun 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 dun. I do like it that it's not like just made up. I mean, it's they're both top four clans. So of course, it's not like a walk in the park for either of them. But yeah, I like it. I like that it's not that easy. And that the games are relatively close. So we have Lokan going towards basically all the bases. With the Kranwagen heading towards the middle, of course, having that turret. That's no real surprise. Legion focusing on the base C side with a little bit of base B, mainly probably to overlook base A and to avoid any easy caps happening. Juicy has been spotted, Zut going in for an early cap. He does get spotted though and that's a little bit tricky. A little bit of a reset there. DF losing a bit of HP. That second shot did not do it. And even if that one did, Legion is capping with two tanks, so they will have an advantage here. And I wonder if she's going straight on push, because Ariana Grande is still reloading. We have the mouse arriving as well. Jushi pushing into... They are ignoring unisex, they are going to go for the AMX. Juicy tanks first is what I've always been taught by the pro clan, uh, pro clans, and their the way that they play tournaments. Ariana Grande is gone. Unisex now set upon by a lot of tanks here, and steadily being deleted. The rest of Loka is arriving. Legion is basically close together. Juicy, having no option but to show his weakness. My camera is flying itself again, which is like so not useful. Edgar. Basically, they want the F, but also the tanks here. We're going to fight on the focus on RG here for a little bit. Set upon by three tanks. Edgar losing a lot of HP. That's the point of this 113, they have the DPM. But at the same time, oof, there goes RG, there goes Edgar. DF is almost gone. No party without me being absolutely hammered here. That's the thing with the one on three. They have the DPM, but they don't have the armor. Trap Melon. DF has been taken out. Trap Melon now the last one alive. A very aggressive gameplay by Legion, but it worked wonders. Juicy in that mouse, making all the difference here. And I'm actually afraid to move my camera because it's just not working as intended. But there we go. And the game is for Legion. <laughs> Just saw someone in the chat say the camera is alive. Well, that's basically how it feels. It's like it's going everywhere, but where I wanted to do, where I wanted to go, I mean. So that's just useless. But yeah, that's something to sort out for wargaming later on. We know that updates break things. In this case, it broke the free the, the free cam. But that was very aggressive gameplay by Legion, and it just it worked. And I wonder what we're going to see next, because that's always the tricky part. You can't really get away with doing things twice. 
generally because people will take into account that you would probably do that. Loka now ready with the T22 medium, 5e5s and a 215b. And they're going to go up against Legion with a 215b, a mouse, a Kranwagen, a VK and 3e5s. So let's see how that's going to go in about one minute. The second match on Fort Despair. Like I said, there's no real pressure just yet. Because it is a, base, a best of seven. And neither team is up for a match point just yet. Let's see. 40 seconds left to go. I kind of... Basically, seeing them in action like this makes me want to get the Crown Wagon back. And I say back because I was a tester as well. So, I've had it. But they took it away from me and I want it again. But I need credits. So, I will have to play and grind credits in order to get it. And that's basically why I always find tedious. I very much dislike... Um, Trend reverting a, a calm brain honestly sorry I'm not having the best of days convert that's the word I was looking for convert gold to credits I, I refuse to do that but it would be so easy maybe if the rate was better but it's really bad but here we go the fourth match of this best of seven dun 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 And let's see what's going to happen. We have Loka focusing on the seaside primarily this time. Maybe going for a fallout rush. Legion splitting up more. In this case, the camera seems to be working, which is nice. All the E5s are going towards base C. NG has been spotted. Takes a hit there. The Kranwagens there as well. But NG absorbs some of the shots, only he doesn't bounce all that much. He does reset that base though. The E5s are there, but Loka is more spread out than Legion was last time. Whoopsie going in. Base C has been capped. RG wants A to be spotted. No one is there, but we're the only ones that know that. And whoopsie does not land those shots. Big hit into unisex though. Juicy. Hugging the building. Unisex losing a bit more HP. And Loka seems to be regrouping around base C. NG now moving in. Along with potentially Radicals to take it. Both of them lose HP, but so does DF. Radicals has to be careful though. Base B is being capped. Choose C. Changing position a little bit. I wonder if they're going to go and decap it. NG keeps getting reset. But so does base B. Ariana Grande getting the blip out of there. But losing a lot of HP doing so. Juicy going in. NG having lost a lot of HP. Loka is absor is going in for it. They're taking this chance. Unisex almost gone. Unable to move. But NG is not looking all that healthy. Radicals not looking healthy. Unisex has been taken out. My camera is flying itself again. Bloody hell. Fuck. Sorry. NG has been taken out. We have a brawl happening here. Basically, Object 3 not looking too healthy. Being absolutely obliterated here. Being taken out. Both teams, basically, no party without me not looking too healthy either. But, both teams are not looking too healthy, to be honest. Zerd. Being massacred slowly but surely. Trap Melon is the next one gone though. But there goes Zerd. Both teams have lost three guns so far. Edgar. The preferred target. Whoopsie. The preferred target. He does not get another shot in. Edgar still alive. 
If barely. He is taken out though. And now we have RG. Oof. Basically, Jerry needs to take that shot. There you go. But he is taken out. Ariana Grande is almost gone. There goes Radicos. Now we only have Juicy. And he does take a hit there. Too much HP. This is Loka's game. And then it will be 2-2. Two -two. Like I said, a stream, I'm all for it. But I just wish... This is basically what is annoying me the most here is my camera. The fact that it's not working as intended. But there goes Juicy. And Loka takes it. Loka, that aggressive push. Basically, in this case, the beat cap was... Uh, the beat cap was the distraction here. And it worked beautifully. It basically took two of uh, Legion's tanks out of the equation too long. And they didn't have a fast tank. So basically, it took them too long to get back together, so to speak. And we are moving back to Alpenstadt, the map that we had the tiebreaker on the other game. One minute, 20 seconds left to go before we go into the fifth match of this best of seven. As said, anything can happen just yet. But after this game, one clan has a potential match point, so then the pressure will be on. And for Alpenstadt... We have Loka almost completely ready with two figures, three E5s, a 268 and potentially a 215B if no E is going for a 268 as well. So double 268s again. Or maybe not. This is basically... <laughs> I keep calling out the, the lines, but they keep changing. But let's see. There you go. Two figures, one 268 and four E5s. First is an incomplete uh, line on the other side yet. But we see two E5s, two T22 mediums, two Kranwagens and a VK. VK90, I should say, because there's also a 72, but I'm just calling it the VK. 16 seconds left to go before we go into the match. It's going up pretty evenly, and I love that. Countdown clock has begun. The Phoenix is not ready up, but now he is, and he's gone for an IS-4 instead of an E5 now. So let's see. Here we go. Juicy again with the post office camo. <laughs> Zut having bought the bit bundle. I bought the VK as well, but I bought the small one. Couldn't be bothered to get the rest. Or at least to spend gold on that. So now we have Loka focusing on the base A side. And Legion going towards the middle. DF into spotting position. But Loka is nowhere near there. The Phoenix moving a bit ahead. The Radicals and Object 3 moving into the middle. But that could potentially be disastrous. They will have to be careful. Base A is being kept. The Radicals has been spotted. But so have the guys in the middle. But they're not going in just yet. Not sure why though. They're pulling back. Potentially call for a different kind of tactic. The E5s are being set up on Object 3, losing some HP there. Jerry relocating to go and help. Zert moving into the middle, losing a lot of HP there. We have the T22s being set up on one side. Legion basically split up. Unisex not looking too healthy. There he goes. Next up, no party without me. Zert has to be careful. Whoopsie. Is going to be gone very soon, and then Angie will be the next target. Radicals losing a bit of HP. No party without me getting tracked here. Whoopsie has been taken out. Zert facing off against Phoenix. There goes no party without me. HP wise is not even that far apart. Angie not looking too healthy. Jerry getting shot there. Angie has been taken out. Zert is not looking healthy either. 
camera is flying itself again. But there you go. The F moving around. Juicy being careful here. I'm getting missed by the Phoenix. Ariana Grande now. So basically Zerd is in between a rock and a hard place. He can't really do anything here. But now Legion is moving in. Edgar as well. Ariana Grande. Jerry has been taken out, but so is the F. And they are focusing on RG here before going after Edgar. Zerd not looking too healthy, but still alive somehow. But it is a relatively close game. They need to save each other. Zerd has been taken out, but that made Edgar waste the shot as well. Object 3, not looking too healthy. We have Juicy protecting the radicals as much as he can. Phoenix, not looking too healthy, but the radicals is being taken out. And that's making things very difficult. He can't get the Phoenix. But he does take another shot. He is reloading his clip though. And he has to be very careful. This is all important. He has to make every shot count. And not take too many shots himself. Basically object 3 in the middle is in trouble. But so is Juicy. Edgar has been taken out. So is object 3. They're both one shots. But there's two of them. And that is very dangerous for Juicy. Loka has the advantage here. Not necessarily in HP. But in guns. Is he going to make it? Is Juicy going to carry this? He has to be very careful. He has all three shots now. But he has to make them count. He does take a shot there. Ariana Grande. Moving around the back. Mm, my camera, this is not the time to do that. Juicy. It is even in scores. It is not even in HP. Juicy has to be very careful. They're running around. Oh my god, this is so close. Juicy can't afford to take risks, but neither can Ariana Grande. He is running around. He can potentially take bases and outplay Juicy. Because it will take time for Juicy to get anywhere. And Juicy doesn't know where he is. But so far they seem content to just run around. And I wonder where Ariana Grande is going. And if it's going to work. My heart is beating in my throat. Not sure about you guys, but mine is. <laughs> I'm not gonna shut up. <laughs> but this is so close. Basically, that light tank. He got spotted. So he knows that there's someone there. Hmm. This is so close. He has to be careful. He has to be so careful here. No! <laughs> oh my god, what a game. Very cleverly played by Ariana Grande. Using that that spotting range of the light tank there. Like that. And Juicy. Basically. Um, not estimating a right in the place where he was. That was... Brilliant. Brilliantly played by Ariana Grande there. What a game. So let's see. One and a half minute left to go before we go into the sixth game of this matchup. And we might get another tiebreaker. That was insane. Oh my god. Whew. So now we have Loka ready in two T22s, three E5s, a mouse and a VK. 
and Legion is still deciding on what to take. One minute left to go, so that is still some time for them to decide definitely on a uh, lineup here. Because now the pressure is on. If Local wins the next game, they have the match and basically they get the point. But if Legion wins the next game, then we get a tiebreaker. 40 seconds left to go. I can't imagine what Legion's chat will be like after that game. Oh my god. Twenty-seven seconds left to go. And Legion is steadily getting ready. And there we go. We see a two six eight, we see two T twenty twos, we see three E fives and an IS four. Just in time too, because now we are entering the countdown clock. And then we'll finally see. Dun 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 dun. Here we go. Whew. That last game though, honestly, can't believe. That was insane. Whew. So let's see. Here we go. Up, up and away. Loka focusing on base B and C this time. Legion doing pretty much the same thing. Zud being quite forwards here. None of Loka is there though. Whoopsie is going to be lining up with quite a lot of tanks here. And they will have to be careful. Unisex immediately taking some shots. Whoopsie miraculously. Oof, the F as well. Now. NG taking a little bit of damage as well, but they have to be careful. Legion relocating. Base C has been kept, but NG, oof, has lost some HP, but Loka has lost way more. There's about 1.5k damage in between them, but the F is not looking all too healthy, and that is very important. More shots being taken, but no damage being done there, except for in Spitfires a little bit now. Base A now being taken, which is a good move. Because you don't want to get that ladder point advantage get too high. Jerry. Basically, Loka just needs to defend now, because they have the advantage of nearly one, well, just over 100 points. So that means Legion will have to make a move in order to have something happen. Legion relocating, abandoning base C. I wonder if Legion's going to capitalize on that. Blind shot happening. Unisex relocating again. VK heading towards base B. But not going in again. He is spotted though. And now we have Whoopsie going in. To base C to steal that. To get that advantage back. Whoopsie getting the cap there. But as long as he stays in there. They will lose that advantage. And they might just make it. Especially since Spitfires is putting back. And now base B is being capped by the VK. But, and base A as well. Cheeky move from Loka to steal base A like that. But it is working. Especially since Juicy does not pen that. But actually, I think he either hit the tracks or he missed altogether. Phoenix losing a lot of HP for that move though. Unisex also losing some HP. We have RG arriving at the back. Juicy pushing, taking out the VK. Moving in. Legion. Going after the mouse. Who can't possibly angle in all directions. Whoopsie losing quite a bit of HP there as well. Crossing over. Edgar being set upon by Whoopsie. There goes the mouse. Zurt and NG helping with Edgar here. 
he is not long for this world. And there goes Edgar. And onwards we go to the next matchup, which is Unisex versus Juicy. Uh, Radicals at the back there. Not looking too healthy. Object 3 arriving. Putting Unisex out of his misery. Let's see. What do we have here? Jerry. Going after the F. He does not look too healthy though. A little bit of a hug there. Jerry is taken out. Angie misses that shot. Ariana Grande not looking too healthy either. But he doesn't miss that one. Ariana Grande going after Angie. Angie missing again. But with so many tanks. And Legion already hit 1k points. It's definitely Legion's game. Even with Angie still dying. And there we go. We are going for another tiebreaker. Great game again. I love these two, honestly. They're very evenly matched. And it's more like the l smart moves versus punishing little mistakes. It's I love it. Honestly, I do. And we are going to go to Normandy next. Normandy, one of the bigger maps that we have. And I honestly love it because of that. Because it's just a lot more exciting. When the map is bigger, because more can happen. I can imagine that that might be different for the players. But as a streamer, I like it. Of course, with the camera going rogue, that is not really something that I'm looking forward to. Because it could go very wrong camera-wise as well. But yeah, let's see. We have Loka now ready in a T22 medium, two E5s, uh, two 215Bs. A Sheridan and an IS-4 versus a 215B, two T-22 mediums, two E-5s and two IS-4s. So that's going to be, depending on what whoops he takes, because he might take something else. But honestly, this is exciting stuff. And he goes for 140s instead, both T-22s, or maybe not. Nope, and he t goes back to his T-22. 30 seconds left to go before we go into the last game of this evening. The all-important tiebreaker between Loka and Legion. If Legion wins this, they will be safe. And they will definitely be through to the top 4. And Loka is already very, very safe. So here we go. Countdown clock has begun. And we are ready to go into the game. Ooh. Honestly, I'm just loving this. This is awesome. So, let's see. Dun, 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 dun. And I'm very curious to see what's going to happen here. If they're going to push. Or if they're going to play it more tactically. Whew. And here we go. Up, up and away. Loka focusing on B and D. Legion spreading out more. The F firing a missile early. Not hitting anything. C and D both being capped by two people. So here, yeah, Loka will have a very tiny point advantage here. Shots happening between Ariana Grande and Zur already. Radicals going into the middle, getting hit by a missile and by Edgar. There is a little bit too much HP being lost too fast there. Jeremy and Juicy in Object 3. Waiting there. Zur, wonder if he's going to go in to the base. But he's daring it with whoopsie there. He might get spotted for it though. And he might get missiled for it. He does get a hit back and another one. This is basically a little bit of trolling done on Legion's side. Loka. Deciding to make a push here. Going after Zerd. And Zerd is pulling back. And he kind of has to because he's losing quite a lot of HP here. Missile being fired. 
but hitting the ground or at least bouncing one of the two. Couldn't see which. Point wise, it is very even. And both teams are. Oof. Radical's a bit lucky there. Zert being set upon by Phoenix here. Big hit in also into Phoenix there. RG not looking too healthy. Zut being pushed. RG being pushed hard here. And being taken out by Whoopsie. Unisex. Next preferred target. Legion going straight on in. So is Loka. Zut is not going to survive this for very long. But Loka has already lost two tanks. And right now Legion still has all their guns. And that's a very big advantage. DF. Losing HP as well. Phoenix is almost gone. There goes DF. Phoenix. There he goes. Survived for longer but won't rise from the ashes there. Ariana Grande being set upon now. And now we have no party without me gone. And Edgar is the only one left. Versus seven guns from Legion. He is not... Oh, camera derpy. But so far it's been holding out pretty well. The low HP guys, except for Zerd, because Zerd is always going a bit. <laughs> what did whoopsie you there? But there we go. It is 7 0 victory, no less. With lots of killed drivers and tracks and, and engines and all of that. That was pretty aggressive gameplay, but in this case, I thought that Loka would push the lower side and would push straight into Zerd, and they did. But a bit too slow, and that allowed Legion to just go in for it. And that worked beautifully. Overall, these games were so close. Not necessarily like all the games, but I mean like in the matchup. These two are... Um, in Dutch we would say aan elkaar gewaagd, which is basically like... Sort of like evenly matched some some way. It's the, the Dutch saying is a little bit better there, but I can't really explain it properly. But yeah, beautiful game, and that's basically secured Legion. So let's have a look at the total scanning. I kind of assume that everything will be known now. Win, win one from Raid. So they're up against EG next. But right, that means that they lost. So they're stuck on three points. So we have five points for Loka, five points for Legion, three for Win, three for Raid. Souls, one from Imol. Surprised there, to be honest. What happened with EG? Dun 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 dun. It would help if you actually loaded. They won from Appa. So they're at three points now. So you have. Loka and Legion both with 5 points. Win, Raid and EG all with 3 points. And Souls, Imo and Appa. Uh, sorry. Uh, Souls with 2 points, Imo with 2 points and Appa with 1 point. But that means that, like I said, Legion and Loka are both definitely through regardless of what happens. Not sure about exactly what point they end up with, as in place. But they're definitely through. And for the rest, EG will have to win against Win. If they want to win, Win has to win against EG if they want to win. Um, like what did I say here? Yeah, they did win. It's not not updated yet. But yeah, that is a very interesting match. EG versus Win on Sunday. That's going to be all telling. And then you have Raid versus Immor. That's also going to be very telling because that's that might also make the difference. So interesting stuff for Sunday, for sure. But I will be streaming Legion versus Appa then. And that is it for now. Those were all the games for tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I definitely did. Fantastic game. So thank you for watching, of course. Thank you for, uh, well, the players. Thanks for the games. I hope you guys enjoyed it all. And I will be back on Sunday to stream that all-important last match. Even though for Legion there's no pressure yet. There's so many pressure on the other teams. Except for Loka, of course. That anything can happen. So, thank you all for that. 
I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you all for watching and I'll be seeing you guys later. Bye-bye.